What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sana channel. My name is Shanks, and today we are going to play a 1v1 match on a beautiful map West Mnet in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. It's Gondor against Isengard, the White City against the White Hand. Oh, yeah, let's get it started. Okay, so we gotta build up a blacksmith and a farm, and also always recruit Peregrine and Took. Even though Gandalf didn't like Peregrine and Took quite a lot, but trust me, that one, he's worth every single penny. The hobbits are having so much impact on the, on the early game and you don't want to miss them and if you are wondering why we are building a blacksmith and a farm is simple the fa you know the farm is needed so we can get our gondonites a bit cheaper with the food bonus and blacksmith is essential because we gotta get it to level two as soon as possible to get the chance to purchase upgrades like forge blades heavy armor and the banner and west Emnet has like two troll layers in the middle and we are trying to sneak in between the trolls to reach the opponent mills because we know the matchup is Isengard, and it's very important for the good factions like Gondor and Rohan when they play against, you know, Isengard and Mordor to hurt their economy as soon as possible. Okay, Alvin Wood, we can place it right here on the spot. Oh, he didn't even buy the mill yet. Okay. Actually, he's chunking us, dude. Oh, we are taking so much damage already, that's not very good. Okay, so it's okay, it's okay. We can also creep the Goblin Lair with Hobbit. And now we gotta, I mean, we lost already one of the guys, I believe, not, even on, even on the Elven Wood, we cannot win this fight. But it's not bad, I guess, because we can this way deny him to take the settlement for himself, and that's better than nothing, obviously. Oh my, what is my Hobbit doing? Betty, you full of a duke! Gandalf is right about you! Dude, <laughs> my Hobbit is kinda in a suicide squad. No, he's running it down, intentionally feeding. Report Hobbit. Oh, and we're also gonna lose the fight. We get 35% increased armor on the Alvin Wood, but again, we lost one of the units. Hold on a second, I have an idea. Okay, let's let's move on, and we can maybe buy this. Nice, nice, nice. Build, build. Nice, there we go. Okay, that's good. That's, you know, that's actually pretty nice for us, because if you know you're gonna lose the fight, you can just buy the farm, and in the worst case scenario, we will still deny him to capture the settlement for himself. One more farm, and then we will be... Uh, saving up for a steeple. Okay, we have a hobbit back on the menu, boys. And with the hobbit, we gotta try to defend our settlement. And we also need to bring the second soldier now down to the front settlement of the Isengard player. Okay, so at this point, it's about defending with the hobbit and also saving up a bit more money. Or oh, he actually gonna pressure all our settlements, isn't he? Oh, that's gonna be painful. Hey, dear troll, please don't dare to touch my trolls. Uh, don't dare to touch my soldiers. Okay, so this is gonna be defended, if I'm not mistaken, but he will obviously be recruiting more and more Uruks, which he needs, because he gotta get the Uruk pit to level 2 as soon as possible, right? That's very important for him. And you know what we're gonna do, or what we're gonna try to do? Hopefully, we will be able to accomplish it. We will try to win... As Gondor against Isengard without recruiting the Maya, the Wizard, Gandalf the Grey, and or the Gandalf the White. I will show you guys the true power of Gondor. Enough of this. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So we need to just S, move, S, move, and cloak. There we go. Nice. This way, he cannot buy this one for himself. Okay, we are also holding ourselves around this side. That's not bad. Keeping the Uruks busy, that's very important because Isengard, if we cannot keep Isengard busy, he will either be focusing on even more settlements of ours, or he can even creep, and uh, both the situations are not very great for us. Okay, the first Gondonite is all about to enter the battlefield, boys. That's gonna be good, and the Uruks are still war chanted, there is no way we can win this fight, and I like the positioning here, you see? It's like in the film 300, 300 and the outnumbered advantage doesn't matter in those kind of choke points. Okay, the first Gondonite, we're gonna go for the second one right off the bat. And the farm is gonna be taken down, but it's okay. You know, it's okay, because we were buying so much land. Okay, we need to first of all kill the Uruks at the top right. That's very important. And also, when you play as Gondor or Rohan against Isengard, you can try to skip the heal from the spellbook and reach out to the Elvin summon when you are Rohan or the Ranger summon when you are Gondor as soon as possible, because at some point of the game, Isengard will not recruit anything else but pikemen. For that reason, you gotta have something on the field that can fight against the pikemen. 
in this case, we will also be building up the barracks, definitely. Hey, kill this, please. Come on, now. Okay. Enough of this. <laughs> okay, the Hobbit is going to be able to clean this up, or... Hobbit, please run for your life. Okay, run. Can't touch this. <laughs> I'm running, my friends. I'm running. Please, Uruk, they are so fast. Uruk. Hey, that's not fair, man. The poor Peregrine took. This guy inted twice. But it's okay. We will get now recapturing the settlements. Isengard base is not looking very strong yet because we were kind of blocking his front mill pretty much until now. We need to build a well for a sustain, for the recovery when we get damaged from the with the Gondonites. And also, I want to build up a barracks as soon as possible because I know sooner or later, and it's going to eventually happen sooner, we will start recruiting pikemen and we will be losing the entire map control. And with the soldiers, we will be at least able to contest a little bit, you know? Okay, creeping action is going on. Let's kill the goblin layer right off the bat as well. And we have almost two power points in the banquet. That's pretty good. So with the two power points in the in the spell book, we can only we need only one more. And that, you see that there comes the first pikeman already. Blacksmith, creeping, two power points collected by now, and we can also move on now to the right. But I'm gonna put them right on the spot. This way they can heal up a bit. You know, when they are level two or higher, they will have the auto recovery, and they can replace the dead units over time. Okay, so yeah, you know. Keeping map control against Isengard is Gondor. When you have no soldiers or no elves or rangers, it's kind of tough. You can creep even more. And we, there is no way. I mean, we cannot fight this pikemen with the Gondonites. There is no way we can do that. For that reason, uh, we need to kind of let them do what they are doing. Let's try something. Let's try to beat this troll into the enemy mill. And then we can also creep this. Oh, I think the mill is too far away. And the troll is not going to get beaten. We got we to gotta cancel the farm now. We got to cancel the farm. Because we will lose the 200 money. And I don't want to lose I don't want to lose the money yet. I want to actually buy for... I, you know what I want... Guys, let's recruit Boromir. The captain of Gondor, okay? Oh, soldiers there? Okay, let's pressure all the time. Mm, Boromir. Boromir, yeah. Okay. So with Boromir, we can creep the trolls in the middle of the map. Because if you don't know, Boromir has a passive ability in Battle for Middle of One, and that is like a knockout or knockdown. Every time you attack a unit, you have a high chance of knocking it down. Which normally would I mean normally a troll, by the way, in Battle for Middle of One is so powerful that heroes like Faramir, even Lords without Carnage, cannot fight a troll in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But Boromir can do that because of his knock. Oh, be careful, Gondonites. And the good thing is, Boromir, when he's level 4, he will give leadership, and leadership is also working on our Gondonites. So we can make our units a bit stronger. That's pretty good. Let's do that. Let's do that. And we have almost the power points too. So at this point, I want to go actually for a base rush with the heavy armor. So let's go for the heavy armor. And then we will have also um, our ranger summon from the spellbook by, by the time. We can summon the rangers, fight for the map control a bit, kill the pikemen, and go inside the jeans. Okay, so we need to heal up a bit. We have the power points now, and we gotta just wait a little bit. In the meantime, you know, it's very important multitasking and macro. Very important, because if we go for the base rush, we need to make sure that at the same time, we are pressuring also the map with the soldiers. Because if he rushes base, he will have to pay attention to his own base, right? He needs to demolish the buildings if he doesn't want to give us power points and experience points, which might make it possible for us that our opponent is not going to pay attention to the settlements. And the soldiers, if they get the chance, they will crush those pikemen in no time. Okay, nice. And that's the plan, boys. We can now also summon the ranger summon right on the elven wood. Let's do that. And with the rangers, you can see if we can crush those pikes in no problem. The problem here is for us, though. Oh, look at that. He has, he has pikemen there. And that's, you see, what we are doing. We are pressuring him, his bees. And at the same time, we are taking care of the map control. We're going to also get the money from the creep. And he's forced now to pay attention. The only unfortunate part for, his, for us is that we have right now, as we are talking, no forge blades. Without forge blades, our DPS from the Gondonites is not the greatest. But we have now money for the forge blades, and let's do that. He does. I'm actually surprised that he's not going for the Warcriders yet. He needs Warcriders, definitely, if he wants to be able to compete 
and with the soldiers because his his pikemen have no chance okay we can also go for the heal now let's use heal okay come together come together my friends okay there we go yeah we, we gotta build eventually now with the one battalion and let's recruit one more gun to get the stable to level two which will give us the chance to purchase the night shield and night shield is gonna make our Gondonites extremely beefy against towers, you know, and arrows. Boromir is level 5. Oh, be careful with the Gondonites. Um, Boromir is level 5. That means we have now the Horn of Gondor, which means we can stun the enemy units. And stun effects, they are a bit more important now in the patch 2.22. And the only un, only two ways Isengard actually can get fear resistance is either from the Tainted Land or from Saruman level 5. So he has none, he has not the Tainted Land, he has also not Saruman on the field. That means the fear cannot be negated. And Boromir is finally going to be able to show his quality, unlike his brother, Faramir. <laughs> Dude, I have the feeling I'm roasting Faramir every single time. But I don't know, man. I don't know why, it's just so fun. Oh, he has War Guardians on the field now. And lots of pikemen in front of my gate. And always play around the battle formations, guys. By the way, if you don't know, I mean, obviously you can see the aggressive stance, you know, in front of your palantir of the, of the units. Uh, every unit now has, oh, be careful, has battle stances. Like aggressive stance, which will mean that they auto-acquire every unit in when they see them, when they are close. And when you use hold ground stance, they want to automate, you see the hold ground stance now, they won't engage anymore. Unless you tell them, unless you click manually on the enemy unit. But they won't auto engage which can actually improve your micro quite a lot for example you how can i say maybe you have a lot of trebuchet and uh, your opponent is sending an explosive mine to you all your trebuchet are gonna automatically start shooting and if you don't want to lose your base you can just use hold ground stance and your trebuchet are not gonna shoot anymore okay there comes the stun boys he cannot move you shall not move let's kill them all Great, great, great. Mm-hmm. Three power points collected. Uh, you know what we can do? We can either go for a, for a, a Rohan summon or we can also save up for the Eagle summon. I mean, I don't know yet. We can decide later on. Turn and fight in Boromir. There we go. Now we can go for a... Unfortunately, our ranger summon is on cooldown, but now we can still be able, hopefully, to deal some economical damage. They've also shields now purchased. Our Gundam Knights, one of them is level 6. Boromir is giving them also leadership. They will hit like an absolute track. And during all this time, again, it's very important to keep focusing on map control. Map control is literally the key to victory. And there comes Lords. Hey, deja vu from the films. Let's go for the Rohan summon. Let's use it behind. Because we might be able to kill his... Oh, be careful. Oh, no. We lost the Gundam Knight. That's painful. He crippled our Boromir too. Deja vu just like in the films. But if we can take down the Uruk pit, I would be happy with this result. Let's ignore Lords and attack the buildings instead. We have heal from the spellbook. We can group them all together and heal them all together. Let's do that, actually. Let's heal them all together. Boom. Boom. There we go. And can we take down the Uruk pit? In the meantime, we, you know, we need to now make a, make a unit and combine. By the way, that's also possible in the patch 2.2 now. You can combine tower guards with soldiers. That was never possible before. It was only a thing for the Isengard. Isengard was the only faction which could combine pikes with swords. And now you can do it also with Gondor. The downside is you will, of course, lose, lose a lot of movement speed. But the good thing about combining units is, if you are wondering, is... If you hold on a second, um, if you combine units, you need to buy upgrades only on one single unit, and the second you combine that with an unupgraded unit, the unupgraded unit from the combination will also receive the upgrades. Oh, Boromir got crippled down again, dude. Ugh. If no heal and rest in peace, Boromir. Can we kill Lords? Lords, die, die, die. Nice, we kill Lords at least. Oh, here's even the land. And the fear didn't work because they are level 3. The fear effects work until level 3. So if they are level 1 or 2, they will get feared until uh, level 3. Or until they have fear resistance, like I mentioned before from, from Tainted Lands or from the from Saruman, the White Wizard. Get the revive or Boromir though. He was highly leveled. Would be nice to get him back on the menu. And we need to refocus on the map control. The good thing about this situation is... 
Um, we have, you know, three power points collected after the elves, uh, after the rangers and the Rohan. And the creep is still remaining on the field. That's surprising. Okay. We can even go for the eagles eventually. And by the way, guys, um, in the upcoming version for the patch 2.22, which will happen in about a few days from now, um, we will have also new animations, rival animations for heroes like Gandalf, and Saruman, Witch King, and also Aragorn. So basically, uh, it's going to be a lot of visual changes, quality of life changes, and hopefully you will, you guys will enjoy that. And also new sound effects for summons like um, Seeds. Eagle summon. When, when, when you summon eagles, it's gonna be Pippin saying the eagles. Eagles are coming. When you will use the call the heart ability from Mordor, it's gonna say, "Yields me an army, worthy of Mordor." So lots of work has been put into that. Hopefully you guys will enjoy. Again, I will keep you of course updated. And if you wanna do me a favor, guys, please make sure to leave a like on this video because likes are helping quite a lot. Appreciate it. Hopefully you will be able to hit 200 likes on this video. Would be really awesome. Keep rushing him down. And we know his Uruk is level 1 only. That means he has no more pikemen anytime soon. And the damage we will deal now is going to be infinite. It's very important to keep pressuring all the time because the last thing you want is that the furnaces from Isengard are gonna hit level 3. Once they hit, once they hit level 3, they will not only become extremely tanky, but also they will shoot, which is going to overall increase the durability of the Isengard or, you know, evil beasts. And that's why we keep killing those furnaces. He will get less money, his buildings are gonna be more squishy, and they will not be able to shoot. So it's a win, win, win situation. Let's kill the armory too. We have almost the Rohan summon back up, we can use it again to maybe kill the Uruk pit again. I, I think we don't even need to use the Rohan to kill the Uruk pit, because it's only level 1 Uruk pit, our Gondor Knights are so highly leveled. Dude, they are hitting like an absolute truck. What is going on? Gondor goes for it, and Rohan will answer indeed. King Theorin is here to support Gondor. Where was, <laughs> where was Rohan when Ves Emnet fell? Oh, here's the outpost, but not for longer. Not for any long, uh, anymore, because we will be able to take it down with Boromir and the Gondor Knights. We can also get this outpost, both of them actually at the same time, and move even to the bottom right outpost at the very same time. And keep pressuring. I mean, these are from the summon, so I don't mind about losing them. If you are wondering why I'm not microing, because I'm also a bit lazy, I gotta be honest with you. And I believe we are in a good standing. He has no pikemen, it means... We, you know what we could eventually do? I mean, again, we won't go for Gandalf. But we can literally spam Gondor Knights at this point. When you know there is no Uruk Pit, the Gondor Knights are your go-to unit. With shields, with heavy armor, with forge blades, they will be so tanky and still hit extremely hard. But for now, we are investing all the money into capturing those outposts. And we have almost 100% map control. That's pretty good. And we need to build a well, a statue, and also archery range. Because I want to uh, put some archers inside the outpost for better protection. And farm. And we can bring these units now also to Boromir and push all together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a level 1. Look, this lumber mill worker, he's brave. <laughs> following our, <laughs> following our <laughs> unit, you know. <laughs> what are you doing, lumber mill worker? Okay, so let's recruit one more combo. Oh, I'm gonna recruit actually. Hold on a second. Let's recruit Pippin. And we can recruit Pippin and put him inside the outpost with rocks. So he can shoot, you know, with the rocks on the heads of the war riders. And we have almost the Eagle Summon too. I don't think the opponent has any chance now at this point. It's nothing to damage the Eagles beside the Towers and Lords, but Lords cannot deal with the Eagles. Eagles are the best of meta of ultimate summon in the game. So it goes like that. Uh, in my opinion, Balrog is better than AOT because Balrog can be used for both. So basically, Bal you can use Balrog underneath of the enemy army and one-shot everything. Army of the Red is only good against, inf against infantry units. And we're also gonna nerf AOD's uh, DPS against the structures in the upcoming version. So basically, uh, what it needs what it needs to be is Army of the Dead should be an army killing ability. But in the previous versions, it was also dealing hella damage to the structures. And we want to change that a bit so you cannot kill heroes, units, and also structures with the one ability. 
I believe, and uh, maybe you agree with me or maybe you don't, but trust me, I've been playing with me for many, many years, and uh, Balrog and EOD are like cheat, you know, they are like Vin, you know, Exodia from, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, let's crash them all. Oh man, we have also now the strong combos, boys, with bottom leadership, let's go. It's not even summon. I don't. I don't think we need eagles here. Oh, Boromir gets crippled down. Poor. I mean, this Lord is anti-Boromir fan. You know what I'm saying? Oh, juicy trample into the crossbow man. Okay. We can, hey, shoot Lords, please, Rangers. There we go. Urufer has been taken down without any um, pikeman again, and he's gonna call it GG, GG. Let's call the eagles. The eagles are coming. Lords, what are you doing, Lords? You're gonna die, bro. Oh, he's using Vorton on my units. What a, what a friendly dude. Oh, he's using Tainted Land. I see that, but I can cover this with my own Elvin Wood. Take that. And Farad has left the game. GG, well played, brother. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe for more content like this. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond standards. Peace out.